Now what makes the Erica Fusion VCO special are the tube-based sub-octave dividers. Right now I have a mix of the normal oscillator and the two sub-octaves. I can go ahead and tap just the oscillator by itself. And I can also change the wet-dry mix to be wet, all sub-octave. I have two dividers. Divider one, that's nominally one octave below, and we'll get to that. And divider two, which is two octaves below. Now, as I said, tubes are used for the dividers. And as you might know, tubes require a lot of power in your neural rack modules. So let's talk about that briefly. This module is power hungry. It wants 215 milliamps on the plus 12 and 185 on the minus 12. When everything's connected normally, everybody's warmed up and working fine. When you first start it up, it wants 250 milliamps on both positive and negative 12 volt lines for a few seconds. That might cause some power supplies to shut down. Fortunately, the Euro Power 40 is one that does not shut down when it sees an initial surge of current required. Now let's talk about what all these different controls do here for the sub-octaves. I'm going to go down to Submix 1, I stop my arpeggio, and go back to a nice C. Let's go ahead and drone that again. Now currently I am playing middle C, and I'll go full dry for the oscillator. And you see that I am playing C4 right there. When I go over to sub-octave 1, we do indeed have a sub-octave wave at C3, but you notice a second one is appearing down here at C2 as well. So the first sub-wave is not just one octave down, it is supplying both an octave below and two octaves below. You have two different controls that affect its tone. There's an overall color control that affects both sides. I'll turn it up to full brightness right now. You can think of it as a low-pass filter that mellows out the sub-octaves. For example, as I bring it down, we can go to something with very little harmonic content. That can actually work better when you're trying to mix it in with other sounds. It doesn't compete with or even dominate the normal VCO tone you have on top. But again, we'll open it up here so you can see what's happening with harmonics. Then the subwave control goes from this rounded square wave to something a little bit more nasally in content. It is a subtle change. And again, it interacts with color. Color being a damp on everyone. Subwave 2 behaves similarly. I'll switch over to Subwave 2. It definitely does have a very strong fundamental two octaves below what a normal oscillator is playing with up at C4. And as you can hear, its subwave control has a much more drastic effect to this almost sawtooth-like harmonic spectra to something that's a little more notchy, just a little bit more formanty. And again, color acts as a low-pass filter on the whole result. So they are kind of one and two octave below, but remember the subwave one also provides some two octave below material. I'll mix them. And again, color is a low pass on the whole thing. So you can go about blending their tones. And we have just a little bit of high-end sizzle in there, but I can reduce that with the color control. And I do have voltage control over the subwave mix. No antenna inverter. So again, you might want to use the utility mixer to control the amount or depth of modulation. I'll go grab that LFO triangle wave again from the Mother 32. Bring that into a channel of my attenuator. Bring that output into the subwave CV. Now you hear we're going between the two extremes at this rate, the LFO. And you can go up into audio rate modulation as well. Play with its depth, offset it, now if you want to use the VCO and the sub-octave divider separate from each other, there is a separate audio in for the sub-octave circuitry that takes the normal VCO out of the circuit. So I can go ahead and grab any waveform, 
For example, I'll grab that sine wave from this thing we are playing with earlier. I'm going to put it up on the display just so you can see it is a radically different pitch there. Patch that over to my audio in for the sub-octave. Now it's tracking the lower pitch of the disting instead. Let's go ahead and change the octaves in the disting. I have my full color controls. So that gives you a little bit more versatility inside your case. You don't need to use it as an oscillator. Now, a lot of people use tubes solely for overdrive circuits or to create a raunchy sound. I have to applaud Erica for going ahead and using tubes to do something a bit different, to do some more subtle tone shaping rather than just merely destroying the sound. That's one of the things that makes the Fusion VCO unique and fun to play with.